Okay, good day folks, and today is the post-election day, uh, November 9th, and Donald Trump won. Wow, nobody saw that coming, maybe except for Donald Trump himself and his closest advisors, but nobody in the media saw this. So, <clears throat> what does this mean? What does a Trump presidency mean? Well, uh... We really don't know. He's been pretty vague on his policies. He's had a lot of typical answers so far with um, you know, cookie-cutter Republican responses. Cut taxes there, eliminate this, eliminate that, bomb them, bomb whoever, I'll do this, and abortion, blah, blah, blah. You know, typical Republican stuff. So, Donald Trump, however, is a little different. He is not bought out like the corporate uh, Republicans. He is just a you know, average Republican who just happens to have a lot of money. So I don't know if he's going to continue the policies of, you know, special interests and, you know, giving unfair advantages to whatever businesses or not. Maybe he'll be more fair when it comes to tax policy, but I don't know if, you know, he's going to actually, like, tax the rich or not. Well, uh, let's be real, he's definitely not going to tax the rich. But I mean, I'm not sure if he's going to give any type of special advantage for any sectors of the economy over another. With this victory of his, there's a question of what happens next to Hillary Clinton? Oh, geez. <laughs> uh, well, Hillary, she's spent um, pretty much her entire adult life chasing the presidency. And she finally got up to, and was confronted by Barack Obama, and he knocked her down. She fought her way back, crawled her way back up top, just to be knocked out by Donald Trump. Now, inside, Hillary is a very angry and emotional person, and I think this is going to be tearing her up inside. And we probably have seen the last of Hillary Clinton in, you know, public life. I doubt she'll ever try to run for office again, this is going to be too much of a humiliation for her. So this is definitely the end of Hillary Clinton in politics. Back to policy. I am a moderate independent. So I never liked either of these candidates. Now with Trump being the next president, I have serious concerns about climate change and... This is a guy who is willfully ignorant because, you know, typical partisans, they live in their own bubble and they refute anything, they reject anything that challenges their thinking. So with any type of evidence of climate change or global warming, he's just going to cast aside. He's not going to care. He's going to ignore it. He's going to continue calling it a hoax and he's just not going to care about the environment. Now, this is sad, this is unfortunate, but this is the reality we live in. I mean, thanks to partisan media, thanks to money in politics, and th thanks to disinformation, we just got to have to find a way to deal with it. So individuals, we have to step up where government won't. Another problem with uh, Hill Donald Trump that I'm concerned with as an independent voter is I am not a religious voter. I am not religious in any way. And in order for Donald Trump to have gotten the nomination to begin with, he had to pretty much get close and cozy with the religious right. And we know the religious right want to legislate morality. They want to end reproductive rights for women. They want to end equal rights for gay people. They want to pretty much tell people what they can or cannot do in the privacy of their own homes when nobody else is affected. And th that is dangerous. That is not liberty. That is fascism. You cannot just tell somebody, yeah, you have freedom so long as you could do this and not do that. I mean, come on. That's not freedom. That's not liberty. That's bullshit. Now, with Hillary Clinton, I was not a big fan of her to be doing with either. She is very corrupt. I can't stand her. And she sells out to everybody. She's definitely sold out the most to the defense industry. Now, some people are saying that with a Donald Trump victory, we are guaranteed to avoid World War III because Hillary Clinton wants 
a no-fly zone in Syria, and that would pretty much mean guaranteed confrontation with Russia. And that would pretty much guarantee a large-scale war, possibly nuclear war, with Russia. So... Let me have a look. Okay. What the fuck? With Hillary Clinton. Uh, she's pretty much sold out to defense industry, like uh, Lockheed and Boeing. They want hawkish positions. They want her to go to war because they want to sell more fighter jets and other tanks and ships. Pretty much with a Hillary presidency, we would see huge amounts of um, conflict. We'd see more war, and that would just drain us and resources. Again, she's complained that war has drained us of lots of lots of resources and money, and yet she would continue this policy because... The defense industry wants her to go to war with somebody, anybody, so that they can sell more planes, they can sell more tanks, they can build more ships. Hillary is just bought. She is unbelievably corrupt. She is possibly the most corrupt politician in recent memory. So, let's look forward. Back to the Trump presidency. Trump, he, his policy is pretty much, economically anyway, is pretty much cut taxes and pretty much what we as citizens do is we use that extra money we'd be making to solve our own problems. The problem with that is um, conservative economic policy relies on people making rational financial decisions. And we live in a world where that's simply not possible right now. There's too much disinformation, and there's too many people making emotional decisions as opposed to rational decisions. And even those who wish to make rational decisions, we don't have all the information we need because of all the disinformation out there, you know, being tossed around by corporate and special interests who wish to mislead the public. Now, I understand where they're coming from when they say they want to cut taxes and get government out of our lives. But the problem is, our society is so much in a bubble. We each have our own partisan bubbles. We each think irrationally most of the time. We just can't be trusted to make rational decisions, and we screw ourselves over when we try to do what, is, what we think is best for ourselves. Now, if we were all geniuses, if we were all well-informed, yes, we definitely could you know, make use of conservative economic policy, but... That's not the case. Now, what if Hillary Clinton won? Well, uh, geez, I don't even know where to begin. She's been all over the place. I have no idea what the hell she would have done besides go to war. Yes, I understand that uh, liberals and progressives, they have health care policies that are saying, uh, okay, every human being has the right to be healthy so that they can live their lives and contribute to society. The problem is, there's going to be freeloaders, there's going to be leeches, there's going to be people who don't contribute to society and leech off the system and abuse it, and that's going to cost everybody in the long run. Now, let's go back to uh, the Republicans. They want to repeal Obamacare and replace it with something. And they say that the key is to increase competition by removing the borders around the state so that insurance companies can compete. Well, here's the thing. Like, over a dozen states already have that restriction removed, and they are free to compete already in all those states. But they don't take advantage of it. The problem is, healthcare industry does not have a universal standard, and regulations across the states are all different, and they are financially incapable of providing effective and efficient service to, you know, the healthcare industry and the healthcare marketplace without, you know, this uh, unified standard. The Obamacare exchange was supposed to alleviate that problem, but it was voluntary and the stand standards were so low and the coverage was so shitty, it was simply not worth it. So, healthcare, oh man. I like the part where anybody can get uh, coverage despite pre-existing conditions, but the Republicans, they have not offered an alternative. They say that competition will artificially create that market for 
uh, pre-existing uh, condition insurance. But I don't see it possible unless there is a universal standard. And I don't see that coming out of the Republican Party, who is not in favor of any type of universal standard anywhere. Oh man, fucking politics. <laughs> Well, that's enough ranting for today. That's my thoughts on the election. That's my thoughts on the aftermath and the candidates and where they're going. So if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want more from me, more videos of anything I do, hit the subscribe button and I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.